Okay, I think we're ready to go. Uh, I will start to uh, welcome you to our webinar on uh, smart cities hosted by Vinova. We're very happy to have representatives from a broad spectrum from both uh, our innovation systems. Uh, this is the first of our four webinars uh, about uh, bilateral cooperation. Tomorrow we will have uh, webinars on uh, our three other areas, cooperation, bioeconomy, health and sustainable mining. This webinar is a part of our dialogue within our common action plan, which has been developed during this year between the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, Brazil, and the Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation in Sweden. So thank you for joining us and taking part of this uh, exciting new way forward. You can also please visit our homepage, uh, sbii.org for more information about our collaboration or joined our LinkedIn group, Sweden Brazil Innovation Initiative. Some uh, practical information. This webinar is intended to be around 75 minutes. Questions to the speaker can be asked in the Q&A and we will try to answer after the panel discussion or else we will answer them after the webinar. And now I'd like to present our moderator for this session, Christina Ehrman. Christina Ehrman is uh, managing the business development and innovation at RISE Connected Society for over 30 years. Uh, with, with over 30 years of experience in design and innovation and in business transformation, covering a range of sectors, including architecture, design, IT, urban development and sustainability. Her main focus are new outreach and international research initiatives and collaboration with industries. Christina is frequently invited to present, represent, represent and discuss further possibilities in connected societies, urban development and sustainability, both national and international. So please, Christina, the word is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction, Jacob. And I uh, hope everyone hears me well. And most welcome to this webinar. Uh, I am not alone here in the in this panel. I'd like to introduce the the prominent participants. I'm starting with you, Jose Gustavo Guantillo. I hope I pronounced you right. Uh, you're working at the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, and you hold the position as a Deputy Secretary and Director of Science and Technology and digital innovation. That's, I uh, hope I got it right. And the uh, next pa uh, panelist is Paulo Jose Pereira Curado. Curado. Uh, you are a director of innovation at CPQD, and that is one of the largest Latin American R&D centers in telecommunications and IT. And then we have David Taff, and you are the CEO of Siemens Participiathos, uh, that means shareholding. <laughs> and you're also the senior investment manager of Siemens Financial Services. And I think you're mostly working within the area of energy. We will probably hear a little bit more about that. And those are the uh, participants from Brazil and now over to Sweden. <clears throat> and here we have Staffan Philipsson. You work at the IVL Research Institute where you are a senior researcher and head of the international unit. And then we also like to welcome Mr. Austin Ekengren. Uh, you are the CEO of Smart City Sweden, which is a state funded export platform that is initiates cooperation between Sweden and other countries within the area of smart and sustainable city solutions. And I am Christina, your moderator. First, I'd just like a little bit of a um, short reflection about the two countries. Um, we, are, um, we are here in Sweden, only 10 million people living here. In Brazil, you are 211 million people, perhaps more, I might not have the latest figures. The population of Sweden is therefore not more than 5% of the ones of Brazil. And the area of Sweden is also only 5% of the area of Brazil. However, some figures are the same. 
in both countries, the number of inhabitants per square kilometers are 25. And also the fact that 87% of the inhabitants are living in cities and the number is increasing. So both countries are facing challenges within the growing cities. And to, today, together with the prominent panel, we will focus the development of smart cities and the challenges and possibilities which are within. So please, we would like to interact with the online participants. Please file your questions in the chat if you'd like to, to um, uh, raise some questions or if you have any reflections. And um, before starting with a panel discussion, we will first listen to two, present, two short presentations from each country. And we're starting with Brazil. Please, Jose, the floor is yours. Excuse me. I think I will, I, I will make the presentation. I will share. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the for people that organize this uh, th this webinar. It's a it's an honor to us to present you to show something about what happened in Brazil about smart cities. Uh, my short presentation. I you uh, I, I you like to present you something about the scenarios, the challenges, and the opportunities that you have in Brazil in the smart cities area. First of all, let me see. First of all, I'd like to present you something about CPQD. CPQD is the largest IT R and D center in Latin America, and the more than a thousand of people is a is a is a private foundation that has. Uh, uh, is uh, is originated by the former Telebras company. The the, the Telebras is the telecom monopoly in the in the eighties in Brazil in the eighties in the nineties. But our mission is contribute with the develop, development, progress, and the well being of the society. Is the is our vision? Is our mission here in Brazil? And to make this one important work that you perform in the in, uh, years ago is to construct uh, is the beauty with the McKinsey Company and Pereira Neto, uh, uh, Internet of Things, an action plan from Brazil, a very large study about the perspectives of, of IoT in Brazil to promote the progress and development of the, our country. This study shows that, uh, unfortunately, this figure is in Portuguese, but I, I will show for you. What does this study conclude? Conclude that if you look at the demand of services, if you have the capacity of the develop in, in our country and in the size of this circle, you have the amount of money that you have here. We have three sectors that could be contribute with IoT with development of our country. This, uh, these environmentals are the rural, uh, Brazil is the is on, one of the largest producers of food in the in the world. The health of the country, or or think you see that Brazil is a is a is a is a large number of inhabitants, and then then health is an important area. And cities, cities is other area that you can develop our country and uh, support this thing is the industry here. And then we select these four environmental as important vectors for the Brazilian uh, progress in the next years. If you see in the next figure, you see the amount, the impact of this prioriz prioriz excuse me, this, uh, this environmental is in the cities, the impact is about 30, uh, 30 billions of dollars until 2024 and you have health in the, in the large amount the industry and you have almost 45 billions and rural and 21 billions this is impact of iot is in our economy and when you see internet of things and cities you are seeing about smart cities one of the one of the uh, these initiatives 
is uh, is going on is uh, in an actual plans for cities. This uh, document is going in evalu evaluation of our city is uh, a Carta Brasileira de Cidades Inteligentes is an agenda of smart cities in Brazil. Is a document that go a guidance, a guideline for smart cities here. Or, or, or think, what, what do you think? What do you say here? You say the definition of a smart sink, the principle that you have to go on, and the, the direction that you go to smart cities in Brazil. This Uh, this document consider that in Brazil we have we have different countries inside our country. When Cristina said that you have 220 millions of inhabitants, we have a different regions here and different kind of cities. You have small cities is a two uh, is five thousand of city that you have a half of a population. This is small cities. When you have in the medium cities, you have to, uh, uh, almost 300, but you have almost 30% of the population. And you have the largest cities, is 40 largest city, you have 30%. Oh, oh, what do you mean? You have a third, uh, a third percent of our cities, of our population, in different conditions. The conditions to you see for smart cities in the great cities and small cities and medium cities is different. You have a kind of variety of situation of things. And you have to see everything. In Brazil, the largest cities in the, in the coast, the small cities in the inside the country. And you have a large portion of our country without cities, uh, medium or larger cities. Is an important thing to see because we have we have to see the attributes of uh, smart and sustainability cities. Uh, I, I think I, I like to put a resume. A smart cities when you we improve the quality of life of the population. I think is the best definition that you have. To go to in order to offer better cities, we have to increase the results of social, economic, and environmental sustainability. We have to respond to challenges like climate change, population growth, and political and economic instability. And you have to involve the society, applied collaborative partnership, urban system, and use data and information and communication technology. And the, in the first moment, you see technology is the key is the key, but it's not the only thing that you have to consider. Because to the main challenge that you have here in Brazil is we have cities on uh, where we don't have drink water, when you have sewer. What happened, uh, what you can see, put a smart city or before to put the infrastructure, or to use the technology to jump it, It's, a, it's one thing that you have to, con to consider. Because if you don't consider it, you have to, to put uh, the difference between the population, to increase the difference, the, the, the quality of life of the population. And you have to see the challenges are to, to put skills for the people. We have the social engagement. We, when, you, when we talk about smart sustainability city, you have social engagement. You have to eliminate the, the, the silos, or, or have you have to see the city, the whole city, not a safety, not a soil, not the drink water. You have to see all city in the same in the in the same perspective. And what you see, what you see, the smart city for the actors that you have are different meanings. When you have the suppliers. The companies that have to supply solution, they say smart parking, they say smart monitoring, smart mobility, is light linking, they say business. For the public managers, they, 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 they see the smart cities and how to improve the, 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 your uh, efficiency. And they say, public managers say online services, shared the infrastructure, operational efficiency, sustainability. 
but for the people that happen, what the people see, security, health, service, mobility, is different view. And you have to see in the same thing uh, to, uh, to, to found the, expect the expectative for these three sides. One, the, the, the proposals that CPQD has and another companies too, is, is one archet architecture for smart cities that consider all point of view. This is the architecture that CPQD is, uh, is, uh, is proposing. And you have layers. You have layers of devices. When you put everything, cameras, and you, and you can put uh, sensors, and you put everything that collect the data. You have the second layer of network that you put everything. And here, with the support of the Brazilian government, we construct a platform, the open, uh, open source IoT platform. The name is Dojo. The Dojo the, uh, make, the, uh, make the treatment, uh, uh, manage all things that you have inside, all devices, all the network, and put and offer for the application the same information that you have here. And then you can put this information for public safety, mobility, disaster prevention, energy efficiency, environment, and so on. And then this platform is open, is free for everybody. There people can uh, download this platform and use. For, uh, and here you have uh, 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 go around everything, the security, data privacy, and technology and policy is going uh, uh, on side of this. For uh, show for the population this thing, we, we, have, we have, excuse me, uh, we have a living lab in Campinas. Campinas is a city that CPKD has, is a million of uh, inhabitants here in, in the, the south of Brazil and southeast. And you perform this architecture. You can see here a large amount of company that participate of this, of this living lab. This is one reason because you have the collaborative system and you have to put the ecosystem to work together to silos elimination of this. And here you see this safe city. I, I think I, I don't show for you the, 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 the face of the people because we have a privacy here. And you have safe city and you have, uh, and I have an application. In the same application, you see the level of the river to, to, to prevent flu. And, uh, and here you, you see the, 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 cl the, the climate provision. Or, or, or see, uh, you can use it to, 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 to mobility for other applications. Is the example that you have here. And you have another example. I think Siemens has an example for it and has another living lab in Brazil. A BDIs is important, uh, is an important living lab in, the, in Foz do Iguaçu. City Nova is another, is another pilot project in Brazil and Recife. And you have a lot of examples here in Brazil. But when you see, after to put this thing, when you hit the scenario, I can divide in two things. First of all, the challenge. The challenge that you have is we have an unequal development. Some parts of the country, you have lack of basic services. Other side of the country, you have very developed services. Second challenge is the, the budget of the government is not so high that it is, is not have capacity to offer investment in this area. And you have uh, uh, another, another thing is for the private company act in this area, you have to, uh, to, to give the visibility of business model that can, you can offer. It can uh, uh, delay the progress in the agenda in Brazil. This is the challenge. But on the other hand, you have opportunities. The opportunity is we have in this, uh, in this pandemic times, you have local local developments for local problems and solutions with if you develop local solutions for local in, in, in the city we we strengthening the economy with integrate with the ecosystems we generate more quality jobs 
we poss we have the possibility to jump you you go the city 1.0 to city 3 3.0 in the same jump we don't have to go forward we we achieve sustainability and uh, uh, evolution mechanisms you can give great engagement for the private sector to make this uh, to make the, to make this work this thing what can happen we have uh, if we improve the pilots we have a reference scenarios we, how, how to change the game in our point of view a virtual cycle for smart cities we we construct uh, reference scenarios with projects aligned and consistent for smart cities this project attract investments make heating of this market and results drive a new uh, a new circles on then we can move the circle put a reference scenarios to put good projects in this and i'd like uh, to the end of this uh, to to left a, a, a thought that i like for peter drucker long range planning does not deal with future decision but with be future of present decisions decision that you make now make our future and i have to make decisions now thank you for the opportunity for everything i'd like to to to, to left you an obrigado cristina obrigado is thank you in portuguese is the first word that everything have to uh, to learn in Portuguese because it's the, <laughs> it's the word that you open every gate that you have here. Thank you for this. Thank you. And excuse Thank me for you. my English. I don't. I'm not a TV speaker, and sometimes I spend a, a time to, to think in English. Uh, I, so I. Thank you. Obrigado. I. I really like you the way you're emphasizing also what you're trying to express with your hands. Uh, it's it's a really nice body language. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Paolo. Uh, really interesting to see uh, and listen to the efforts and the challenges you're facing, but also what you have in mind for 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 doing um, uh, doing it right and how important it is to think about what we decide today for the future of uh, uh, everything. And that's so tricky because it is changing so rapidly. The technology and the world is, everything is, uh, is, is uh, the change is constant. We'll discuss more about that. But now I think we'll uh, hand over to Osten Ekengren. He is the CEO at the Smart City Platform, Smart City Sweden Export Platform. Please, would you tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what type of things are we doing in Sweden and how do we, how do we develop these in uh, collaboration with others? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you see the PPT, I hope. Yeah, we so, do also. Yeah. yeah. So I start. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. I represent here the Smart City Sweden initiative, which is an initiative from the Swedish government. Background is that we have many visitors coming to our country and they want to learn the history, how we have developed the cities during the years. So we started 2017 to collect the good experiences from all Sweden and different aspects. And now we are running a visiting center. So we have one office in Stockholm and then over the country. And the goal is to spread our knowledge, but also spread our technology and also attract investment coming to Sweden because we must develop a better. Uh, OECD ranked the different countries how close you are to reach the sustainable development goal last year. Sweden was ranked as number two. Unfortunately, Denmark was number one. It's our neighbor, but still they are also good. So the question is, how can we be uh, so good as we think we are? This doesn't mean that we are satisfied. We are far away to reach the target until 2030. 
But we think there are four components that is very important. First is innovation. Sweden has for many years spent 3.3 percentage of GDP on research and development. Two third comes from the industry. And nowadays they want to increase this figure to a bit more than four. This is very important because you can never be satisfied with the solution. You must move on and you must find better and smarter solutions. But also we learn that you must involve the citizen much more. Why we are developing cities is because of the citizen and they must have a good life. If you are talking about the smart city, how is the definition? In my world, it means a city that is trying to be sustainable. There is no sustainable city in the world as far as I know. But remember also that a city is connected with a citizen. The city of Ulm in Germany, I think very few have heard about the city. That's where Albert Einstein was born. So we need more people like Albert Einstein in the city, but we need also system solutions. We think system solution is a way forward because you connect different areas and develop solution. And most of it, we are talking about eco-governance. What does it mean? It means that in most cities all over the world, you divide the responsibility in a city in different sectors. So water and sewage is one responsibility, energy is one, waste, traffic is another. And the problem is that we cannot connect those silos to find common solutions. And that is needed. We need an integrated approach. Without that, we are not able to develop the real smart cities because we cannot learn from the different sectors and not connect them. So the holistic perspective is, is very, very important. And in that also include to invite the private sector. The government planning will not be enough or the municipality planning. You need also the innovative solutions from the private sector. And this must be open-minded from both sides. When you develop a city, one of the crucial thing is to increase the air quality. There is no city in the world that has good enough air quality. It must be uh, much better everywhere, even in Sweden. You must also come up with water so that the citizen can drink. You must take care of it. You must take care of the waste. You must find a way that you can do the transport without sitting in traffic queues for hour and also in an environmental friendly way. So digitalization comes up as a tool that can be helpful for all those areas. But also remember urban planning is crucial. You cannot only have buildings in a city. You need also to have green areas. You need to have meeting places. And that touches social sustainability. So nowadays with COVID-19 is so important to remember. Uh, we are hopefully striving to reach the Paris Agreement, all of us. Sweden has a commitment to be um, emission free, zero emission 2045. And now our funding agency, Vinova, has stimulated nine Swedish cities to sign agreement to reach the goal 2030. And this is something new that you set up a mission for a whole city to go for this. And we think it's very a productive way of working because it stimulates uh, different actors to try to reach that goal together. We know that to be able to reach this, we need transformative changes. And to take it from the, the positive point, remember that New York switched from horses on the street the year 1900 to cars on the street 1913. It's only 13 years. You can also remember how you used your mobile phone 10 years uh, back and how you're using the mobile phone now. 
So this gave us hope that it can do uh, dramatically changes in, in a few years. But we need also better energy. We need clean energy. So uh, windmill and solar cell, the electricity from them are being cheaper and cheaper. And that is very promising. But it also comes up with how, how can we have the storage when the wind is not blowing and the sun is not shining. So therefore we should cooperate to help each other to develop better battery capacities. Or we produce hydrogen gas from the electricity, which is another way for storage. Or we can back up with some alternative production of electricity. If you go to the mobility sector, the first thing is that you must be more efficient. So the way you have built up the bus transport system in some cities in Brazil is really good because you have free spaces for the bus transport and you lower the investment cost and the running cost. We also see that EV cars and, and uh, buses and lorries is coming quickly. So every city try to buy more of them and also to, to have them uh, because you have no emission in the city, it's silent. So it's very good from that perspective. Still investment cost is quite high. So in Sweden, we also have the strategy to use alternative fuels. Sweden is the number uh, one country in the European Union to introduce alternative fuels. Already 2012, we have more than 10% of the fuels coming from biodiesel, bioethanol, a lot from Brazil and biogas. So this in combination with introducing of EV transport is a good way to, to have a more sustainable mobility. And with the 5G entrance, we can also now more and more see autonomous cars that will go on the streets. And I believe myself that uh, small lorries going around in nighttime with goods to the different shops will be the first sector that will have a change. But remember also that the time has gone when it when you should be owner of one or two, three cars. We must be more clever to share the use of the transport media. And I think the young generation shows the way forward because they are not so prestigious to own your own car. They are willing to share and we must do that in a city because the space is limited. When you are producing uh, houses, and cars, you need a lot of raw material. And for Sweden, for example, transport sector represents 30% of the emission of carbon dioxide, industry another one third. So what we try to do is to produce cement and steel more environmental friendly. And one of the largest investment in research in Sweden is to start to produce uh, steel in the blast furnace, not using coal, but using hydrogen gas. And we do the same for cement to minimize the emission. And on top of that, we introduce more and more houses build up of forest material. We are covered by 70% of forests, so we will use that in a clever way. Every city generates a lot of waste. And if you cannot handle the waste, you are a bit far away to being sustainable. We in Sweden decided many years ago to minimize the, the use of, of landfill because we saw the problem with water pollution, air pollution, spreading of diseases and lots of resources. And we have been quite successful. Nowadays, only 0.4% of household waste goes to landfill. What we are striving for is more material, material recycling now it's like 35 percentage. We want to increase it by recycling more of plastic, more of clothes, more of batteries and so on. We also recycle more and more of the organic part of the household waste as biogas. What is left we are using incineration with energy recovery. This has been a long journey, but it has helped us to minimize emission. When we close the landfill, we lower the emission of 
carbon dioxide equivalent with 77 percentage between 1990 and now. And also with the introduction of district heating and district cooling, we have lowered the emission a lot. And we cannot only use household waste. We also use forest residues more and more in this solution. And remember the largest uh, interest for energy in the future is cooling, not only because the temperature worldwide is increasing, but it is a demand that have smarter cooling possibility. And with this solution, you will have a, a better possibility for that. And talking about climate change, you are lucky in this uh, map, you can see Brazil is, is not red, not even Sweden, but now we started to have problem on the islands around Sweden with water shortage. And this is spread all over the world. And this help us to rethink we are dealing with water. We think that we should protect the environment with a wastewater treatment plant. But the future, this is not good enough. It must be more circular. So what we have been doing in Sweden is to, to develop a production plant where you see wastewater as a resource and the water out must be able to be reused even as drinking water or to farm a land or industry. The same time you should produce energy, you should produce nutrients. So this is a circular way of handling a resource. And this goes hand in hand for also other areas like the waste, which I was talking about before. When doing all this, you need a lot of information. And the former presenter gave a very good introduction of IoT and how to work in this area. Of course, Sweden also see the possibilities by having sensors all over the city. So what we are doing is we install sensors for water quality, for air quality. Uh, we also for the energy consumption, for the traffic and so on. And all this is very, very important. And uh, I'm happy that you men mentioned in your previous speech about open sources, because a researcher must be able to bring in the data that is needed to develop the smarter city. So this goes hand in hand with what I said before, but we see it also as a tool a tool to develop the smart city that can deliver the solution that the inhabitants want to have. And they are strong tools and they will be even stronger in the future. And now, I mean, most cities here in Sweden, we are waiting for the 5G to be everywhere and it will help enormous. And after that, we will be waiting for 6G or 7G. So it's continuous development. So I will end up with saying that business, uh, Smart City Sweden, we try to arrange visits. We have many visitors from your country. Nowadays, we organize digital visits. We also do some um, pre-studies in different countries. We run training courses, organize webinars, and we have contact with 1500 clean tech companies. So if you have interest, we can help you for to connection, but we also want to stimulate more research cooperation. So we think it's really good this initiative because solution cannot be developed in one country. We must cooperate to develop them together and adapt them to the local condition. So thank you, this was my introduction. Your, your microphone is off, Christina. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, Austin. And thank you also, Paolo. Uh, I'm sorry we do not have, we can't um, provide the applause, but you're, we are really happy that you, that the way you presented and all the interesting um, uh, projects and um, 
and a lot, and all the things uh, that is going on in the, the different countries and how that is uh, really stimulating this discussion. Austin, I would like to ask you, uh, this, the platform, the export platform, is, is, it seems to be very successful. How important is the vision uh, for a future digitalization and data-driven society? How is that part of the Swedish competitive strength, do you think? Yeah, it's very important. I mean, we have Ericsson and we have some other uh, large companies in this sector. So we believe that uh, together with the ICT sector and the experiences we have, we can develop even smarter solutions in, in a similar way they presented from Brazil. Uh, why I did not stress it, because I know that they will focus on this I will focus on, on the more basic needs, but they are connected. So mm. um, you must fulfill the requirement, but those tools is, is very, very important. And you know, it's also a discussion about how much that can be open and security and things like that. Mm. Mm. Christina, do you allow yes. to make some comments? Yeah. Sure, uh, oh, sure, Paolo, sure. Yeah, when I saw the Austin, uh, the presentation, Thank you, Austin. Congratulations for the presentation. It's very clear. Uh, I've been thinking about something. When I mentioned in my presentation the silos that you, that you have, I present you the, the, the initiative for uh, telecommunications, for IT, for the systems. But you have other initiatives that I, I personally work that. For instance, we have a huge program from Brazilian Agents of Energy about electrical mobility. All right, we have several programs running in Brazil. Here in Campinas, we start a program that that use electrical mobility, uh, seeing for electric cars, sharing cars, photovoltaic thing, uh, electric station to, to 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 put it in order. And then I think uh, smart city is a is a, is a large uh, is a, there is a large areas. In the, in the in the non now in our uh, webinar, we don't cover everything that you can make from no. uh, exchange things. And mm -hmm. then one suggestion for you, if you want after it, I can put uh, uh, other persons in contact to make the, the, these links. For mm -hmm. electrical uh, electrical cars, we go inside because it's electrical car, but uh, information technology. In artificial intelligence in the core of, of this technology and mm. is our business. This is the business that Gontijo uh, uh, foment in Brazil. I think if I, if I go in this side to put another actors in contact could be growing because we have a lot of uh, possibilities in Brazil. We have a, a lot of uh, mm. situation here and then we have sure. a lot of agents and questions. Thank you so much. Excuse yeah. me, but thank uh, you, thank you. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's there's a lot of questions and a lot of thoughts that will pop up from 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 many of us. And I think I'd I like to turn to 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 um, to you, Jose, because we've been thinking, we've been listening to to uh, the Brazilian case here and the <clears throat> the mission to contribute to development and well-being of society about the bigger picture, but how do we increase the understanding of the public values for the development of society of a smart city? Would you like to elaborate on that question? The values of the public, uh, the, the public values. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, good morning, my name is is like that that I said. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, the public values. Uh, we have uh, a challenging approach because uh, the municipality has independence, right? So we need to promote and, and and training and provide all the tools for the cities. But at the end of the day, uh, as the Estocolmo mayor said to Ericsson CTO that he told me. Uh, the, the, the mayor is the guy that knows better what he needs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. can provide a lot of solutions, as, as Paulo said, we can provide funding, 
we can provide uh, capability, we can provide training. But at the end of the day, we need a, a very engagement uh, from the cities, from the mayor, to, to implement the smart city. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are, there are some public services such as mobility, trans public transport, uh, health, and so on, that the federal government can engage and implement the solutions and foster in that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the value for the government is how to increase the speed of the, digi the, the digital digitalization of the public services mm -hmm. uh, in cities with less than 50,000 citizens. This is the mm. challenge. When you think mm. about Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Brasilia, it, it's not so complex. Of course, there is some complexity, but it's not so complex. When you go mm. inside the country, as Brazil is very, uh, despite the, 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 the size in the population, I, in my view, Brazil is very similar to Sweden. If you think that we have a very populated area close to yes. Como and the shore, close to the, to the inside mm. sea and so on, and you have that uh, isolated area in the north is, is very similar to Amazon region inside country to going to, to South America middle. So uh, mm -hmm. if you think about that, we, we have to get some different approaches. Probably in our partnership, we in yes. Sydney Value, we can mm -hmm. think about the big cities looking to Stockholm region and the small cities, how we can reach connective in the, in the north part of Sweden and in the mm -hmm. north part of the country in Brazil. Mm. I guess mm. this is the main value. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very good ideas that uh, you bring up. Uh, yeah, and we are talking about the, the majors and the, the representatives from municipalities about what they know about the, the um, let's say, their needs the, the, to stimulate the <clears throat> new innovations. But it, it's a lot about also the person-orientated cities and en enhancing the whole of a city, the whole of society. And Honestly, our municipalities and the public authorities are they ready for this tremendous change. What do you think, Stefan, who is uh, uh, representing research? Are they ready? Uh, well, uh, I think this is really a an very important, but also a, an extremely huge question that I think most leaders and uh, engaged citizens now is trying to find an answer on. Uh, but for the moment, I should unfortunately to say that the answer most often are no. Um, even though the digitalization like the internet and the social medias offers a great possibility, uh, it is in the same time nowadays much harder to use those new technologies for gathering citizens compared to the situation when I grew up with one state-owned TV channel. Uh, there are no, now so many different platforms and different ideas uh, of the way forward. Mm. Uh, maybe I think that the answer lies in the interaction between the top-down and the bottom-up approach. And I could give you one uh, old successful example of using this mechanism. I think men, today many people find Sweden to be a rather clean country without much of litter and rubbish in the nature and in, on the streets. Uh, this was not the situation when I grew up, but by building up a new mindset through the school system, we made a huge progress in a very few years. The children learned, discussed between each other in school. Uh, they, they together find solution. They acted together by picking litter in the streets and in the nature. But maybe the most important part of this, uh, this uh, activities was that they brought the discussions to their home, to the parents. In just a few years, we changed our mindset regarding dropping litter and cars, etc., into the nature. Mm. So this kind of mechanism, where you, you, you go bottom, uh, top bottom and bottom up, mm. could be one mm. fast way forward. But yes. of course, this assumes that the leaders gain the missions to solve the challenges addressing the SDGs, mm. including the, the SDGs for smart cities. Mm -hmm. Yes, you really have a point there. Thank you, Stefan, uh, in relation to education and the next coming generation, how to stimulate another type of behavioral and uh, mindset and awareness. 
Um, well, different players have different perceptions of values uh, in the smart city. There are citizens, public authorities, suppliers, etc. And David, Siemens is a supplier. What type of values do you envision that Siemens can contribute to? Please, David. Thank you. Um, first, a little bit of context. We're, we're a global industrial company based in Germany. We've got roughly 90 billion euros in revenues. And we're one of the leading suppliers of systems for power generation, transmission, medical diagnosis, mobility, digitalization, automation for industry and buildings. And I think we're also one of the largest software companies in the world. So we're extremely active in providing cybersecurity services to our clients. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think we as a company um, have enormous uh, or interfaces across most of the dimensions that you know we've I've heard the different panelists discuss as uh, relevant to smart cities, uh, integrating technology and infrastructure, adding intelligence to urban systems, uh, digital inclusion, uh, increasing the efficiency of industry, uh, reducing power consumption. Um, and in general, uh, being able to uh, analyze and, and use uh, the data that um, all of these sensors and all of this intelligence is gonna generate so we can put it uh, at the service of, uh, of society. In my case, through, um, uh, through different uh, business models. Um, we're also a huge player in innovation. Uh, I think we spend annually about 5.4 billion euros. Um, and as a corporate citizen, I think um, we're extremely active in uh, a global dialogue and in Brazil in a national dialogue through think tanks, through some of the initiatives that Paulo uh, mentioned. In fact, some of them uh, I know uh, Jose, Secretary Jose Gontijo is involved, like the letter on uh, smart cities and the 4.0 uh, chamber. Um, so we have several ways in which we participate um, in, in these issues. Um, sustainability is something that the company is extremely focused on globally, nationally. Our CEO, uh, you know, is one of the signatories of a letter sent to the Brazilian government on how environmental issues were absolutely key to Brazil remaining a competitive economy. Um, we've produced and we are, or, or let's say, I think we're in the process of producing a global white paper on cybersecurity um, because as we enter this world where we hope to extract um, uh, data and use it uh, to promote the values and the outcomes that we want for our cities, um, this entails enormous risks uh, that we have to be careful with. Um, and then obviously we're also involved in certain pilot projects, including I think uh, one with CPQB or at least with the regulator in terms of electric mobility. So mm -hmm. just to sum up, as a supplier, obviously we have these conversations, we sell our technology and our equipment and engage uh, with buyers um, who are uh, active in this space. And then I guess for, for another question, Christian, um, we're also a supplier of capital to clients, to projects and to startups. So there's mm -hmm. another dimension of Siemens that's active in this uh, space as an investor, which is where I'm primarily focused. Oh, very good to clarify that. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes, uh, there are. We're all. There are so many aspects of of smart cities, and we're all. Uh, I mean, we we just have so short time. So I think we'll uh, have to move on. And uh, one thing that really is uh, one of the that the the biggest things that are uh, and you were mentioning Einstein before and I think that is also here where he started that is it, it is the quote from him I'd like to to share and that is how he believed that the quality of the solution you generate is in direct proportion to your ability to identify the problem you have to solve right and therefore I would like to ask you Jose 
how do you, how can we, you were also into this with your, with your final um, uh, uh, slide, how what we do today will have effects uh, far away, far ahead in um, all the people of the planet of prosperity. And uh, how can we secure that we understand the problems? Do you have a, a well, is it Jose or is it Paolo? Who would you like to, to answer? Okay. <laughs> Paulo or Jose, who would you like to answer? Don't you? Okay. Pode falar. All right. I think if I understand correctly, your word is something. Brazil. Brazil has a... When I listen to what you say here, Brazil has a situation that cities is like European cities. When you uh, when you have solutions for uh, Stefan make the education is the problem to convince people to, to make things, but in Brazil we have a lot of situations of we we don't uh, it, it now it's impossible to make the cor the, the correct uh, question that you have because we don't know and you have to no. improve for this reason you have to improve the ecosystems to involve the population, what the population need uh, for your be better quality, to, to move mm -hmm. exactly. The solution that you have in, in large cities and developed countries is not the same that you need there. Is the mm -hmm. reason because the letter of uh, uh, the, the agenda for smart city that the government issued these days is a guidance to make this question for the population. Put mm -hmm. the guideline. Mm -hmm. When you say smart city, you have a sustainable city. You 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 have a a, 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 a more general city with the population. Mm -hmm. When you have this letter to guidance, you can ask for the community to make the correct question that that you know. Some some uh, regions here, some uh, cities, uh, we know the question because we, they are very developing. The situation mm. that you say that uh, the solution that you have in other countries is applied here, but other areas we don't have the question, and you have to mm. Uh, mm. to to to, mm. to make to, to involve the community, to involve the ecosystem, mm. to make mm. the question. I mm. answer a question, yeah. Christina. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> it is actually really, really hard to understand the problems, and uh, therefore it is a it is. I mean. It is in the making, so thank you. <laughs> I'm fine with your answer. And Stefan, I would ask you how how come uh, the smart city views, smart cities can contribute to quality of life? And smart cities are nothing without people with citizens. We have talked about that. How do we secure the inclusion of people and the user-driven solution and benefits? The way also Paolo phrased it, we have to include the, those we are uh, solving problems for. How do we, how do we make it happen? Please, Stefan. Uh, also, uh, very good and huge question, uh, very important and. Uh, I think there are really a number of definitions for, for what a smart city is. Uh, and, and one of the best I heard was from a major of one of the capitals of IoT innovations in the world. He used the definition that the smart city is a city where the citizens find themselves enjoying the life. Um, experience clean air, uh, experience clean water, find the easy living, without traffic jam, et cetera. He also included climate change as, as the knowledge regarding the impact of the, from the cities on the climate as one of the, the, the most important uh, aspects of, of a good life nowadays. Uh, they find that the way forward was to, as one part of many different ways, work together with the citizens for example, through digital solutions and the use of uh, the pupils in, in, in schools, etc. So mm -hmm. by, by, uh, by understanding and asking and interacting with, with the citizens mm -hmm. uh, how to, to, to develop the smart city, you will get mm -hmm. a lot of 
good answers and, and, and also good uh, uh, ideas for the solutions. And yes, those you should yeah. use and, and, uh, and develop mm. the city. Mm. Mm. Thank you. And um, I, the time is running fast, so I think we'll uh, jump off to another, another very important um, um, tool or process or mindset or whatever vision is that we have to make a lot of innovation here. And that, that's one of the things we, we, we actually hear in this uh, panel to discuss, how do we make innovation happen? And uh, how do we strengthen the innovation capacity? I, will, I would ask you, Paolo, how do you think we can strengthen our innovation capacity? Can we learn from Sweden? Can we have, have your, your own ideas? What do you think? I think we, we can improve the collaboration. Collaboration is very good, is, is an important point of smart city in my point of view. Uh, to, to use, uh, if I can use uh, the Sweden experience in greenfield cities to improve our green city, uh, our, uh, our city that you don't have anything now, could be a, 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 a starting point to, to, to to put a lot of technology that you already develop. I, I know that it, it's a, uh, it, it's a starting point that I, I, know, I know here, all right? The collaboration mm -hmm. between Sweden company, uh, I personally working with uh, Ericsson for a long, long time. Ericsson has a tradition here. Uh, Siemens, uh, so on, has a tradition that working here. But where uh, in cities, on where we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of company acting, I think is the starting point to collaborate with our country. And your experience in mm. greenfield cities uh, yeah. could be important to to add uh, technology in uh, in our technological uh, the technological development. Mm. Uh, mm. As I say. Uh, collaboration and a local solution is important. How to sure. improve this collaboration in local points, if you have experience, could be uh, a way to exchange experience and to mm. make the, 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 the smart cities in Brazil growing and put experience mm. in Sweden companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that brings us to our our collaboration, and that is uh, uh, one of the. I mean, we're very much looking forward to what in what areas we also could collaborate. And I would uh, come back to you, Austin, a little bit, and uh, about um, the innovation, and uh, to you, David, about investments. But first, I'd like just very briefly, Stefan, what are the areas that we have uh, in the handling plan? discuss that would be interesting to to work within uh, well we we will um, uh, work in i think actually those uh, areas we have been talking about we also have in the action plan uh, uh, for the for the collaboration we, we need to work with I, iot solutions but those has to be connected to the social life uh, to the technology uh, uh, for like wastewater treatment plants uh, for mobility, uh, etc. They had to be mm. strongly connected to, to the needs um, mm. and not work in silos alone. So mm. uh, basically we have what, what we are talking about, we have in our working plan. Mm. Thank you. And David, how do we attract private capital and investments? Yeah, um, that, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure if I would phrase it that way. And I'll give you <laughs> Sao Paulo as an example. Okay. Uh, the greater Sao Paulo metropolitan region is about 23% of the Brazilian population and about 33% of GDP. Sao Paulo doesn't have a problem attracting investment, um, not per se. In, in fact, it concentrates a great amount of, of the investment of this country. I think what you want to do is have the investment uh, oriented towards uh, activities that are going to promote the concepts of smart cities. 
And sometimes, and, and you'll excuse me, my point of view is extremely narrow. I look at the world like an investor looks at the world, a little bit like a mushroom hunter. I'm looking for truffles. So I'm looking for businesses that will be able to make money. And uh, for example, um, the entire Brazilian uh, sector has been waiting for change, a regulatory change to be able to invest in waste and uh, wastewater sanitation services. That has just recently become available. Um, and it's only recently become available because uh, municipalities that did not have uh, capacity to invest or the managerial ability to organize uh, and attract investments finally went to the experts, to the National Development Bank, to the IFC, and said, could you please help us in organizing, uh, for example, a public-private uh, partnership that would attract investments? They've done that. It's, it's taken off. I think the larger point is a little bit that um, the private sector reacts to incentives. So just like we demand that cars incorporate, we, we don't allow cars to be sold without seat belts. Um, governments like cities for whom concentrate a large proportion of industry will suffer disproportionately the effects of climate change could have very specific uh, policy actions that would open doors. For example, we as an investor have just invested in a battery storage as a service company in Brazil. What do you have during three hours a day in Brazil, especially in the cities, everyone turns on their diesel generator from six in the evening till nine o'clock at night and you hear it go off everywhere. That's pollution, that's logistics. We had a diesel strike that stopped the entire city a couple of years ago. Um, how does that get solved? It gets solved with batteries. What's the issue? Importing batteries to Brazil has huge tariffs. Couldn't the city of Sao Paulo, for example, participate in a government discussion to reduce tariffs on batteries um, to promote an industry that will change uh, the way we experience the city and will change the amount of investment that goes into the wrong areas? Mm -hmm. And I'll stop there, but I, I have see. more examples. Yeah, super interesting, David, really interesting. And uh, unfortunately, we are now, uh, we have to let in some questions or not. Unfortunately, we'll like to interact, but just very, very shortly, Austin, would you say something about how to make uh, two countries come together? What does it take in, in the uh, leadership to make the innovation happen? Uh, can you just have a, a comment on that, Austin? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, what we've done in Sweden during the last 10 years is, is quite good. Vinova introduced demand-driven research. So when you do research, it could not only be a problem for, for a smaller village in Sweden, it must be a common interest globally. Mm -hmm. That put different stakeholders together and then you have the need of demonstration as a next stage. And the third stage must be that for full-scale installation, cities must go in front and start to buying solutions that is in the front, but not having no reference. So that's the mm. way you open the market. So if I link that to cooperation between Sweden and Brazil, I think mm. it should be a similar way, should be demand-driven. Mm. We should have also different demonstration under different condition. And we should stimulate the entry to the market because without that, there is no innovation. Very good. I think I have to cut there, unfortunately. But please, now, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the, 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 the interesting um, ideas and possibilities we are, we are envisioning. And now over to the audience. And Jacob, would you like to bring up some questions? Yes, uh, it's uh, Regina here from Vinoa. Oh, hi, uh, Regina. Thank you very much. <laughs> hi, hi. Uh, hi. I will read some of the questions. We have uh, one from um, Rebro University, Emeline Leite. Uh, it's to Paolo. What's, what uh, Sweden can learn from Brazil in terms of sustainable cities? 
Uh, short, please. Yes, very <laughs> short. No, no. No, only a couple of minutes left. So the, excuse, I, I, I think what you can learn, and uh, we have a, a, a variety of situation here, and we can manage. You can manage uh, with uh, solutions with uh, low cost solutions for uh, for for this question i think in brazil we make we make solutions with a large amount with uh, with low amount of money i think uh, low cost solutions could be a learning for sweden brazil thank you thank you thank you very much another question uh, and this is for uh, jose contigo we have uh, seen nowadays a need for new forms of collaboration, co-creation. Uh, for example, when there is um, society participation, a new concept is appearing for the traditional public-private partnership towards public-private people partnerships. Do you have any thoughts about it? What, what can Brazilian uh, government uh, do or what are, is the Brazilian government doing about motivate people citizen participation? Very interesting. Yeah, very interesting question. Uh, first of all, uh, we, I guess we can think in, in two approaches, one in the public policy, one in the solutions, right? In the public policy, we, when we establish the national uh, Internet of Things plan, national digital transformation uh, strategy, national artificial intelligence strategy, all, all those policies, every policy we did, a lot of public consultants, lots of workshops, lot of every time, Everyone that wants to contribute to the policy, they have the opportunity to do that. And then that's a pretty, pretty, pretty interesting approach because everyone can see their thoughts inside the policy. And the other one is the government, uh, as David uh, said, uh, the government has the, 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 the job, the duty to give uh, to, this, to the citizens, to the companies, to everyone, uh, uh, reducing uh, opportunities to reduce the risk or to, to, to stimulate the adoption of technology. So we have funding for the companies, but when we think about the citizens, what we can do, uh, the dojo that uh, Paulo Curado mentioned in his presentation is an open platform, open source platform. Everyone can download it. Everyone can collaborate and develop the platform. Uh, in, in some someday I was talking with Paulo in another meeting and he told me that Many big operators in Brazil are already using Dojo and he didn't even know. They let him know before. They, 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 we don't only understand the, the, how it can be a, a collaborative uh, development approach looking to this specific project. Big companies are using that. R&D centers are using that. And myself, in my house, I can download it and coding and use it as I can. So, and such as a community. So. This kind of project, thinking about open innovation, is one thing that we're doing with Dojo, with mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, and so on. So I, I guess this can, the government duty can be in this direction. Thank you. I, I unfortunately have to cut there, and I'm so sorry for everyone in the audience that might not have got the answer, uh, because we, we must write, we have to, to cut in one minute, right? There is no room for, for extending the panel. I turn to you, Regina. We cannot. We it's it's just one one minute left airtime, right? I think it's better to wrap it up right now. And yes. please, okay. any questions or whatever, email us. Yes, email, and we'll we'll answer your questions uh, uh, with with mail. I'm I'm sorry, we're we're out of time. So, please, very short, uh, Stefan and Jose, would you wrap, uh, have the final remarks, please? Okay, yes, for 10 seconds, then I, I, I will just uh, wrap it up by saying thanks to all and, and it was actually really interesting discussions and presentations and, and I'm really looking forward for the, for the future collaboration and ongoing collaboration between Thank our you. countries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jose, would you like to say some final remarks? Well, uh, tak. thank you, obrigado to ah. everyone. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it was a very interesting meeting. I, 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 for this, the talk, for everything, I, I guess you can find very good uh, projects to do together with our friends from Sweden. And uh, let's see what we can do even more. Thank you. I, I Thank just you. want to add one thing. Obrigado. Yes, obrigado. <laughs> obrigado. Thank you. And Jacob, now it's your 
Yes, right. thank you very much. I will thank you everybody in the panel very much for your participation. It's been very valuable. I think we have a, a very good base now also to continue our collaboration bilateral between Sweden and Brazil. And we have been lifting a lot of uh, important questions also, I think. And I also want to thank you, our audience, which has been listening and sending in some questions. And I will, of course, we will try to answer them later on um, by email, maybe. And also want to remind that this is the first of three or four seminars. And tomorrow we will continue with the bioeconomy, uh, health, and uh, sustainable mining. So please, if you don't, if you're not registered yet, you can still do that on our homepage. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>